Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. Talked a little bit about this. Notice there's been some changes to uh, this Forex factor. It looks like they added in a few news stories from when I showed it on Saturday. So today we're at the 18th, essentially. We've got a um, little bit more than two weeks to the end of the month. Seems like time's been flying this year. We're already almost halfway done the year when uh, many of us are still writing 20 on our checks still, right? <laughs> Steve, you write checks? Eh, occasionally we do. <clears throat> in any case, the uh, news here, May 18th, uh, Tuesday. So, you know, Governor Bailey uh, speaks and he's been speaking. Um, a lot of this took place this morning. So we'll take a look, obviously, to see what all the GBP pairs have been uh, issued with this. Um, I do have a question. I don't have a poll open. Um, but I do have a question. If you guys want to just answer it in the chat window, it's fine. Um, who understands the crypto market? <clears throat> you could respond in whichever way you want. Um, who understands what's going on outside of currencies in the crypto market? Because this is just truly a risk management discussion in and of itself. And most of it's just centers around one billionaire's ability to move the crypto market. The fact that um, you really don't ever want to invest um, in a market with a large chunk of your wealth, if in fact there is a single individual somewhere on the planet, be a central banker, some sort of large influencer in social media, a billionaire, you know, obviously folks in politics or individuals running countries um, or any kind of parliament position. So. Um, it's a problem if the entire market tanks on one person's comments. I'm talking about Elon Musk. So <clears throat> a lot of people have come to me on Twitter independently um, through some of my other channels, even some clients said, you know, you always um, say, you know, you maybe want to have some money in crypto, but that it really is truly the wild west for a reason. Okay. So let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at the crypto complex, as I call it. <clears throat> Notice Coinbase just keeps going down. So this is beginning to look quite head and shoulders like, I would say, the neckline somewhere basically broken now. Um, and you really want to begin to see some rallies on uh, this news, so just the daily chart of Bitcoin, US dollar. There's a lot of other ways to look at this chart, but just very in its most simplistic form. Um, I was looking for it to come down and touch um, the 200 day, which is going to force a lot of liquidations. Um, I'm going to retract all previous statements from the past that says, I think you should be a buyer right here. I really don't. What I think we should do, if you want to be a buyer, make sure it's a very small piece of your pie and that you can afford to lose the money in this because I'm, I, don't know, I, just, I don't have a feeling um, that I want to catch a knife on this particular fall. So, albeit this is a fairly solid breakout and you know, keep in mind all the people that are very heavy in Bitcoin, uh, whether it be you know, wealthy individuals or just the, the ridiculous amount of trolls that are heavy in the Telegram and Twitter channels related to this subject, um, they're going to be talking up their book, right? So as I always tell my son and daughter and uh, many of our clients, you know, believe maybe 10% of what you read out there, maybe the less, okay? Because the rest of it's all bullshit. And you need to focus on the ones that truly don't have any kind of ulterior motives in mind, like myself. I'd rather educate you. I will never talk my book, okay? Which happens a lot on the financial channels, Bloomberg, CNBC, Fox Business, right? 
all the independent channels, the vast majority of news. And, you know, most of the people that are interviewed out there, just they're talking their book. So, and it, it forces many people to say things like, oh, well, geez, you know, how do I trust anybody in the Fin media? You really don't, you know, use their discussions with a grain of salt. In many cases, you can use it as a building block um, to what more than likely is not going to happen. Why? Uh, because multiple Nobel Prizes in financial theory over the last number of decades uh, have taught us very simply that if everybody's talking about something, it's mostly priced into the market. So if, if you remember nothing I've ever taught over the last little bit more than a year I've been at the helm here, um, just remember that. If they're all talking about it, more than likely, if it's an efficient market where this particular thing's talked about, I don't care if it's a piece of art, you know, it's a, a community of homes in Florida, right? If everybody thinks the price is high, <clears throat> certainly could still go higher, right? Markets can be irrational a heck of a lot longer than you can be solvent, right? That's a very famous statement from more than a few people on Wall Street, but it's true. So I always just tell everybody, take a grain of salt. Don't believe everything that you see or read unless it truly comes from an expert that you can be pretty comfortable is not talking their book. So get off my soapbox now. We'll go into, so I, I'd much rather be, you know, like the risk management issue would be, well, if I want to have some exposure and let's say I have a hundred thousand dollar portfolio, maybe I'd take, I don't know, two grand and buy Bitcoin. It would probably be related no more than about 2% of the entire portfolio size, right? Or whatever the portfolio is, keep it to like 2%. You can average down, right? At the lower portion of this facing range, which is essentially another 10,000 below that in value. And then average down again uh, here to 20, right? <clears throat> you can go in with a half percent at each of these levels. You know, a lot of people say, ah, well, you know, I'm not getting exposure enough. It's true. What if I'm dead wrong and this whole thing goes back to 4,000 like it did last summer, right? Don't think it can happen, right? Look back to the history of this. Got to go to a weekly chart to see it. You know, I came out off of just an absolute rip into 17. One of the few times I posted live on Twitter um, and said, if you are in this currency, um, you really should take the vast majority of it off the table. You can more than likely be able to buy it back lower. Um, and sure enough, you know, it bottomed out right around the 3,300 area, which is a good place to accumulate. And, uh, you know, I took some of my own advice against my better judgment um, and invested, you know, just a couple thousand bucks and it turned out to pay off, you know, great. Uh, but I'm mostly out of the whole thing. So, I mean, I'm just waiting for it to come back down to earth again and, you know, maybe it doesn't make it down to this far, you know, right? Maybe it only makes it down to some of these previous levels. You know, we finally have, um, in terms of technical analysis, enough candles that we can put or be able to discern some sort of level that has real meaning um, on a larger time frame. So you can look to the weekly moving averages. You can look to some previous support and resistance area, right? <clears throat> That's why I think this 40 area is going to be uh, like Custer's last stand, if you will, in terms of it holding this, just looking back on the daily chart. Now, even though I'm breaking from the discussions on currencies and equities and some of the other stuff, um, you know, I think it's important to make sure that we can look back on some kind of charting on crypto. You, know, you can take a look at Ethereum, <clears throat> a little bit of a different situation. Again, you always start with daily charts, look at weekly. You, know, you can see we're kind of where up, but we're essentially up in nosebleed section. And, you know, for those that constantly say and that, you know, the world, as far as thin media is full of these individuals that are constantly talking up their book and that it's going on a thousand and you should have what's called a, an HODL, right? Which is just an acronym for a stupid lack of risk management statement uh, called, <clears throat> <clears throat> you know, just essentially hold on for dear life, right? Don't think that's really any kind of mantra that I'd want to be spreading among any of my friends, right? Because if you're holding on for dear life, that means you're willing to put up with the volatility. And many people are putting way too much money in this. There is going to be tears in the streets if this stuff doesn't get or hold these levels that many are just hoping and praying uh, because they bought at the top, right? Please don't be that person. 
I don't mind being wrong. I just don't want to lose money. You know, missing most of this run, uh, which was just <clears throat> um, in 17, you know, I just didn't really trust any of this stuff. Um, I have a better feel for it. I mean, there's a lot out there on Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum, and there's a bazillion other tokens and coins. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, do your research on them, but just know that many of the exchanges that these trade on, maybe with the exception of Coinbase and a couple of others, um, are fraught with risk. Um, people are doing all kinds of transfers and money's not showing up in whatever wallet they have. I mean, I just, this, this stuff doesn't happen in stocks, ETFs, you know, mutual funds, bonds, and, and options land, right? If you open up a brokerage account, I don't care if it's E-Trade, right? I don't care if you open up an account um, at Thinkorswim, you know, those are two of the better outfits out there. You know, your money is going to be transferred into those accounts and transferred out. And in many cases, it'll happen within a day or two. There's none of this lost money for wallets and all this. So <clears throat> the reason I'm saying all this is that what I'm going to be pushing for as far as an additional product line at Avoria is going to be an options and or equity based um, manual trading system. There's a bunch of them out there. The vast majority of them are crap. Uh, but there is three or four gentlemen that I've run with for many, many years. Um, it's in one case, a couple of decades that have a really good service out there that really just pinpoints breakouts as I'm constantly talking about in the equity market. And they're really only focusing with their scanners on equities that are looking to break out um, from really good solid base, right? And you don't necessarily have to buy the equity. You can go in and buy the option. You know, you can buy an option on something like a Caterpillar, right? one of the biggest machinery companies on the planet. <clears throat> and you can do just as well with the options on a breakout of the stock as you could trading anything in crypto land, right? Now, if you're buying, you know, something at point, you know, 10 zeros and three one, and it goes to, you know, point zero and then five zeros, you know, you've done really well in your money, right? Uh, but it could also go completely poof, right? If you're buying a breakout in um, Caterpillar, you know, it's not going anywhere. May go up, may go down, right? Company is not going anywhere generally. So th there's an argument for a, a safer component related to that. <clears throat> so anyway, that's, that's just my diatribe. Let's take a look at the dollar chart here. Uh, Danielle, the Forex cheat sheet PDF is not very clear around the graphs. Um, it's important to know those prints. We can't see it. I'm not sure how clear it is showing up. Um, I could show you what it looks like on my screen. It's actually fairly clear. Just download the PDF. I don't know what kind of um, you know screens or computers or if you have Adobe software, but it'll allow you to view it better. <clears throat> All right, so dollar index, <clears throat> go through this real quick because um, I got to take off the client meeting. Um, essentially under 90 here, I'm expecting this to break under this 89.30 area and then eventually head to 85 and 80. When, how long, for how period of time, to what degree, it's almost impossible to forecast that stuff because I could be dead wrong. We could trade completely sideways on this for the next nine months, right? But it looks to me with the breakout in gold higher, which typically precipitates a fall in the dollar index and or the U.S. dollar related to many other currencies, maybe with the exception of the yen, um, to be looks like it's getting started once we get past this. It could be a, a waterfall event. So make sure you're paying attention to this chart in terms of the bigger time frame, dollar, um, DXY, daily index, weeklies to see where this could potentially be going, but this whole 80 area is not out of question. And it will have been almost six years since we've been in this area, should we break this whole area, which quite frankly, to me, is a cliff. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us move right back down inside this whole other balance area, which essentially is just under 85 right here. And... <clears throat> have an entirely new range to rotate back and forth inside. Euro USD on the opposite side of that coin, spike daily.
Yeah. Um, I can tell you, Daniela, the, a lot of the printouts that I've seen coming off of non um, Adobe, you know, Windows 10 type stuff, I've heard that complaint before. <clears throat> Uh, and that makes sense. So usually what I'll suggest is opening up with Adobe, which is where it was created. If you got access to that on a, on a Mac um, and then just print it out directly from there versus your phone. <clears throat> a lot of times you can shrink the screen. So forth. if you have like Adobe pro, which we have, we actually have the whole Adobe suite here in the office. So everybody can do all kinds of work designing stuff for us. In case a uh, Euro USD, <clears throat> I'm much changed from last. I've been squawking about this same situation now for six months. <laughs> but as, as we broke into this upper zone, right, just like the opposite of the DXY, as it's broken, hopefully, potentially down into the lower zone, I would not be accepting trades <clears throat> we get above 23. Anything on the short side, in my opinion. <clears throat> I could be wrong, and it could poke its head above there and just fall right back down inside this upper range we've been in since this zipper move. Let me show you this. See this move right here? A lot of times this will happen a day, some cases two, in this case, four days. That's right, one, two, three, five days, right? Five days after we broke out of the range. So you peak above the range. A lot of times you'll have a doji that forms like you see here, it's an indecision candle. It'll test against that level, which we did here on the 30th of November. And then we just have a complete lift. <clears throat> this is oftentimes what you see. So if you look at it, just, you know, obviously you'd have made money being short. Uh, what was arguably an extension outside of the range, right? But we came back down to test still closed higher. Right. So essentially we were one. I think we are. Yeah, let me just so see how we were one time framing up for one, two, three. One time framing up just means the candles have higher lows, higher highs. Not as important what the body of the candle looks like, but essentially the what this is telling you is that other time frames are starting to sort of dip their toes in the water. And then this sort of stop run hit. Not something you want to be short for a while now as we got all the way up to this this chart pattern that plays out on anything you can trade you'll have a, a huge move out not always this is a big stop run and then you have a settling out period if you will you're overstretched on you know almost any kind of extension based band uh, at this top level and you have a little bit of a pullback get long again because it's going to come and torch the shorts again so remember these chart patterns as i talk about these a lot because uh, they will show up over and over again. <clears throat> so we've had a bunch of requests for CAD JPY. Let me just take a quick look at I had a feeling this was going to be lifting higher today. Pound yen. No surprise. Strength there. CAD JPY. Let's take a look. I actually was just looking at this. <clears throat> so you know, if you think about it again, this is kind of like what I was just teaching, right? You had a, a period of time, make sure on the daily, yeah, a period of time where you're essentially just trending sideways. I call this a balancing period. So people will call it a rotational period, high or low. You're rotating essentially between support and resistance lines or whatever other technical analysis of lining up in confluence. Once you break, have a little peak above, a couple of dojis, and then you have the big lift. In many cases, there's a lot of institutions caught off guard uh, because a lot of the bank's internal currency management trading desks are a bunch of idiots and they're caught off guard and then essentially just have a grind up, right? <clears throat> I would not um, have been short this entire period of time. I probably still wouldn't have taken these shorts. And certainly there's ones that would have made money. But I mean, just look at statistics. We broke. Would just not as motivated to be accepting any kind of short unless it's the short that takes place the day after there's a huge zipper, right? Because then statistically, you probably have a better shot of a higher win rate on that group of trades or whatever sequence builds short, right? But I wouldn't want to be in that long because it's just a matter of time before it starts to come out.
So when you're looking at the, the grand scheme, note that we broke on CAD because you can see when there's a lot of green lines and stuff, I've done a whole bunch of analysis. Uh, we broke a real long-term downtrend line uh, that's just had us absolutely reeling ever since. So hopefully the software or whatever software is trading sees this big break. This is a daily, right? And if you go to the weekly on this, you reset the scale. You can see how important this line was showing up. Um, and it's been nothing but <clears throat> up. Now, again, you know, Canadian uh, currency has been strong in relation to many other currencies. That's just a, a known factor, you know, essentially since last summer uh, filtered out into Q4, right? So you, again, you've got prevailing uh, tailwinds strength uh, in the Canadian dollar. And you've got prevailing tailwinds of weakness in the yen related to almost everything else, right? So no surprise in that respect. So this is where I have a problem personally with any kind of software that's not able to recognize this because this is not difficult stuff, guys. You listen to me drone on about this shit enough times, it's going to begin to just become complete osmosis um, in your subconscious and you will start to see all this stuff and you will not be taking those trades. Now for the automated version, some of the software, it's more of a difficult thing, right? And they should have the ability, in my opinion, to see that a potential trend has started, right? They're not going to catch it at the beginning. They're not going to see that it ended at the top, right? Uh, but we're looking at a weekly chart here. And if you look at the monthly, it's almost the same thing. I mean, this is a very pronounced break, right? On all kinds of time frames, from daily all the way up to monthly, right? That's something that's got to be recognized. Um, but so the question always is, well, okay, that's great, Steve. When's it going to pull back? I don't know. <laughs> we're stretched. Let's just say that we're stretched on a monthly. We're stretched big time on a weekly. I mean, I don't have to draw any bands for you guys to know how stretched we are in terms of the lift, right? And into, certainly to the daily. So at some point we will have some reversion back to the mean, but I would only expect it to come back to this level right at 88. So if you're buried in some of these trades and whatever amalgamation of sequences that have um, been put out in your accounts, this is the area where I'd want to be flat on all those shorts. Personally, could be wrong, right? All right, so let's go to CHFJPY. So same thing, same thing. <clears throat> yeah, because yeah, I almost overlay these two on top of each other. They just look similar. Got to wait for it to come back. We're stretched on the daily. Take a look at weekly. Huh? So more than likely, we've got a chance to come back. So for these heavy in sequences of shorts, you probably want to ask yourself and or the developers the question, <clears throat> how come it did not have the ability to spot that we're in big trend up, right? You can see a very, very... Um, clear break of this let's open it up look at how this support level here right where my dotted line is it came up against an arguably pretty big resistance point <clears throat> not support but resistance point here broke peaked above it right mm. Had a doji print, and nah, these really weren't that great of representations of that. But notice it's stalled out right here. And then, boom, this is when usually the institutional or hedge fund frequency money will start striking. You don't want to be on the opposite side of this. So maybe in the beginning, if you're trading with money, you can ill afford to lose, which I would highly doubt against. Go to demo and or just start paying more attention to my calls, get it out to the team. Um, and then we can, you guys will begin to see while well, stuff's really lifting out. Do I want to be taking shorts uh, as the freight train's flying through the station, right? <clears throat> I'd rather just grab on to the caboose and ride the train instead of trying to step in front of it. AUD CAD. <clears throat> so our next request, make sure you always start off with daily charts, in my opinion. Reset the price scale. I always shrink them up so I can get a better time frame feel for the <clears throat> solid strength of, of Aussie. Um, 
which hasn't been the case of late. <clears throat> but in general, there has been uptrend strength. This is one of the few that the Canadian dollar is actually weak against. So knowing that, have the opposite play out. I mean, we're at support right here. It's certainly go down to a further support level, which is <clears throat> um, this ninety-three, this ninety-three thirty-ish area. But if we break that, guys, we're going lower. So just know that. Want to be short, not long, in my opinion. Let me get all the questions. EuroCAD, the, the request. There we go. Still holding the support. Got to go back to weekly to see if we break. Probably headed down to this 4350 ish area. Yes, uh, Robert, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that, sir. <clears throat> Do note for those Aussie pairs, this uh, employment report and change tomorrow. There's been a lot of surprises in these numbers, certainly was in the US the last number. <clears throat> um, and I think that surprised a lot of people. Uh, the ones that weren't surprised, the ones that understood that many of these states' unemployments <clears throat> are paying people to stay home and not work, needs to cut the program for all but the most needy, uh, so everybody can go back to work. And then you have crazy, um, very poorly run legislatures in states like Rhode Island that takes the stupid policy of offering their unemployed a thousand bucks in bonus if they go get a job. <laughs> Imagine trying to police that. Uh, you know, you've got a job, right? Millions of people are like, yeah, where's my thousand bucks? I'm going to get a job. Bad policy. In any case, so that's the story of Forex Factories. Make sure I went through all these charts. Take a quick peek daily on bonds. These are U.S. bond markets. I want to make sure we're staying inside this range so we don't have any crazy events going on. Uh, do note, uh, S&P still back up into the center point of this huge move. And this is just the Spiders ETF, which represents the S&P 500. Take a look real quickly at gold. Again, been harping on this break for a while. Uh, this is a a poorly uh, organized, but who cares, enough solidity to the handle, a couple of handle break uh, that has lifted us up. And we are riding this pretty heavy. Uh, we actually expect this to completely zoom into this whole 1950 and potentially 2500 as the ultimate high, um, which would be way up there and would be absolutely worthy of taking lots of profits. If we ever got up to that point, I would be surprised if we are heavy in gold at all at 2,500. We'll wait for the pullback. Just a side note. What we're doing with clients. Um, the oil question I got, uh, we're probably looking, <clears throat> not the best analyst in this market because it's very unpredictable. I mean, who predicted the contract would go to zero, right, in April of last year? <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm just not a big energy guy, at least a fossil fuel guy, because most of this area is going to be evaporating in about 20 years. So um, I would see this probably rolling up to probably 75, um, like we talked about. And it looks like the correction could probably take us back down to this, this whole 50 area, I would expect, <clears throat> of where we launched from this point. So you can see where the support is, right around 50. The pullback. So if you're looking to get long the Chevrons, the XOMs, right? Any of the <clears throat> offshore drillers, Kermagee type guys, that's the area I'd be looking to do on it. All right, guys, that is it. Follow the Telegram channels of all your <clears throat> experts. And keep in mind the developers of each of the softwares, they know their chart patterns better than I do. So if you have questions, because they've spent a lot more time on it, especially in the, a lot of the back testing they do with the different versions of um, the analyzing software you see, Quant Analyzer being one of it, ask them those guys questions related to more specifics, things like <clears throat> 
are you looking to build into that way? It doesn't seem like I'm being the bad guy because I'm always hounding on these guys to improve their software, right? <clears throat> um, you know, make sure you, you, you have them explain why their software didn't recognize a particular trend change or the breakout from some long base, uh, which is very easily recognizable to the human eye if you know what you're looking for. It's not tough. So that way the chorus goes louder, right? <clears throat> and the developers won't hate me <laughs> for constantly hounding on them to improve their software. But, you know, somebody's got to kick them in the pants, right? So I, I stay pretty tight on uh, some of the developers. I haven't met uh, one of the developers yet, but soon enough, I'll get a chance to be uh, in a call with Killian. <clears throat> but I, I always like have a tendency to want to let things sort of smoothed out, right? Get ironed out, if you will, before um, I come in with guns blazing and record. <laughs> so <clears throat> in any case, everybody have a good week. Be well, be safe. May the trades be with you. Thank you.